Hello and a very warm welcome to the video. You're looking at Westminster Abbey, most particularly you're looking at a piece of steampunk gothic, something that detractors call the hairy armpit of St Peter's Westminster, Western Tower, put there a year or so ago at the cost of some 23 million pounds. You can see at the top it blocks out the light of some of the top windows there and some of the windows at the side. I don't bring it up in order to give you my criticisms of it, but just to issue a general warning to those thinking it sensible or clever idea to alter medieval Gothic religious architecture. These things were designed very, very carefully using Pythagorean geometry and number and proportion very, very carefully in order to reflect the glory and the mystery of God Architects nowadays, of course, are more interested in money, in lifts, lavatories and things like that. And that's a very far remove from the ancient cathedral builders who were entirely concerned with uh, man's relation to God. So I do have some sympathy with those who think that the Western Tower is an act of vandalism. However, I will, to my dying day, be fighting another piece of Westminster Abbey vandalism, and that is what they did to the tomb of William Shakespeare, and that's what I want to talk about today. I'm going to take you via Hackney, if I may. I know I've taken you here before. This is the Church of St Augustine's, as it was then called, and I discuss it briefly in a presentation called William Bass New. And in that presentation, I showed you this tomb, which exists no longer, all that's left of it really is this 1790s engraving it has no name upon it but we know it's the tomb of the Earl of Oxford and that the Earl of Oxford is being signified as Shakespeare. Those of you who've been following my uploads or presentations on online will know that time and again contemporaries discussing Shakespeare refer to him with the numbers 1740. Ben Jonson does it, William Covell in 1595, Hugh Holland in 1623, Thomas Hayward, John Warren, Thomas Porter, Francis Mears, the sonnet's dedication does it. All of these I've already discussed online. So those who have been following the work that I've been doing will know exactly what I'm talking about. The reason I bring this back now is because, to my dismay, uh, one of my friends contacted me after seeing William Bassnew and said, I don't understand how this tomb represents 1740. And I spoke to some of my friends and they don't get it either. So I'm just going to go through that one more time and hope this time to make it clearer. My apologies if I wasn't very clear the first time. If you take a square, as it was known in to the Tudors and uh, people in early modern Britain, a four square, because of course it has four sides and four corners, and therefore if you're going to associate a number with it, that number is obviously four. A quatrefoil is called a quatrefoil because it has four leaves, so that would obviously be represented by the number four too. But more importantly than the number four, it is, of course, since medieval times, a symbol of the cross, a very religious symbol, the quatrefoil. And a cross is a T. It doesn't matter whether it's a capital T, as in the Tau cross. We see medieval pictures of the crucifixion using a Tau cross or the lowercase, more conventional Christian cross. Either way, the cross is a T. So if you put your T and your four square together, then you have a four T. And then if you do that 17 times, then you have 1740. So once again, we have Shakespeare, Oxford represented by 1740. But as we know, Oxford was moved from under this grave and reburied in Westminster Abbey. Sometime we think about 1619, something like that, and in 1740, a monument to Shakespeare was put directly on top of him. Now, I don't want to bore people because, as I say, a lot of people have seen what I've put online already. But if you're totally new and this is the first video of mine you've seen, you're going to have to go back and look at a series of presentations called Where is Shakespeare Really Buried? And that explains how we know that he was buried in Westminster Abbey. On one of those videos, I show you the epitaph to Shakespeare that is in the Holy Trinity Church in Stratford-upon-Avon. And there you see a line of 17 characters. That's the letters, including the superscript characters and the funny little 
comma at the end of it, there's 17 characters just beneath four marshalled T's. So again, you have 1740 laid out in the shape of a Masonic square in the bottom right-hand corner. If you go to the Shakespeare monument in Westminster Abbey and you see he's pointing to a scroll with some writing on it, the cloud cut towers, they've taken the E out of towers very deliberately, so it's 17 letters across and four T's down, so again 1740 once again laid out like a Masonic square and this time in the top left hand corner as though a deliberate reflection of the Stratford Monument, 1740. Now if we go down to, to his feet, you see there carved P. Schemachers, that's the sculptor, Fechit, M. D. C. C. X. L. And that's the Latin numeral way of writing 1740. So twice on this monument we have 1740. And don't say to me, oh yes, of course you only have 1740 on that because that's the year the monument was put up. It's very, very unusual to put the date on a monument when it was put up. In fact, uh, this one was designed by Kent and sculpted by Shea Mackers. There's another Kent Shea Mackers monument in Westminster Abbey. That's this one, which is the Granville Gower Monument. And if you look closely at that, you see um, Gull Kent, William Kent, invented it, i.e. designed it, and Peter Shea Mackers fetched it, and no date there. Couldn't find another monument at all in Westminster Abbey that had the date when it was put up actually inscribed onto it. So you have to ask yourself, why was 1740 written on the Shakespeare monument? Not once, but twice. Now, this of course got me thinking. Tria sunt omnia, threes are all. If you've got two 1740s, there should really be three. And we've seen time and time again in these encryptions that things are done three times. And once they're done three times, of course, then then there's no going back on them. It's as though they have been validated. So where is our third 1740? Now, some time ago, I don't know if you remember, I challenged you, the viewer, to say, could you find the number 40 in this statue? It's actually staring straight at us. I don't know if any of you went for it and, and had a go. If you did, it's not too difficult. The statue, if seen from behind it, is the shape of the Cairo, the symbol of Christ. But looking at it straight on, as we're looking at it now, you see that his right elbow sticks out in a certain way to conjoin with his body to form the number four, and that his legs are crossed as an X. X, of course, is 10 in Roman numerals. So if you have four Xs, you have four tens, which is 40. Not terribly difficult. But the reason I put it in that coy way before and said, can you f see if you can find it rather than showing it to you, was because I felt it was incomplete, that we should be seeing 1740, not just 40, and I couldn't see the 17. I've shown you 1740 twice, there should be three times. Where is the 17? Uh, it should be seen, I believe, in just the way that you're looking at the 40. So you should be able to see 1740 from the view we're looking at it straight on now. Well, of course, I spend hours staring at it and wasting time and counting little rivets in the top of the architrave and the wrinkles in his jacket and the buttons and so on and so forth and didn't get anywhere and it wasn't until I took a broader view and started looking at all the rubbish that's all around it the statue of Burns and Thompson and the memorials to Jane Austen and Johnson and it's a mess this is a, a total mess and I've already complained to you many times it breaks my heart to see this ridiculous bit of carving put there in 1977 talking about William Shakespeare of Stratford buried at Stratford upon Avon. It's really, it really misses the point, the purity of this image, the symbolism. Every single thing is in its place. You cannot start mucking about with things like this. And Westminster Abbey must say sorry. I don't know who owns this. They probably think they do, but it was put there by public subscription. And I certainly don't believe the public was ever after they wanted this graffiti put upon it. Anyway, the point that I'm trying to make is that having realised that the Abbey is capable of extraordinary vandalism, it occurred to me to wonder whether the 17, which I simply couldn't find, had in some way been removed or obscured by Westminster Abbey over the years. So I started looking at some of the older pictures.
here's the Gravelo engraving from about 1741, so just after it was put up. Again, it doesn't really seem to help. Um, there's another one dated 1754, and this is actually followed on from the Gravelo engraving. So uh, I think it was taken directly from it. I don't think the person actually who made it stood, called Cole. I don't think he stood in front of the monument to do it. Um, this one is very extraordinary because a caption to the picture has been put, as you can see, all that writing down there. But it's a caption to the picture. That writing was never there. That was all plain. So I was getting a little bit despairing until the other day I came across this one. Um, this is by Charles Grignon after Samuel Whale. And look what we have right in front. An iron railing, in fact, made to look like spears. And yes, I'm sure you've guessed it. There are 17 spears there. So we have our 1740. That is what the monument originally looked like, and clearly that railing and those 17 spears were an intricate part of the design, and they were meant to be there. And that is your third presentiment of 1740, completing the, the saying, Tria sunt omnia. So looking back, you can just see why one just despairs, really, at what Westminster Abbey have done here turned it into a veritable pigsty. So might I suggest that next time the Abbey is considering spending £23 million on lifts, lavatories and underarm hair, that they divert their attentions to this awful mess they've created and try to step back in time and to put it back to what it once was, to restore the 17 spears, the iron railings to the front, to rid all the sides of that hideous and objectionable junk and to re-erect the partition that made William Bass, right back in the beginning of the 17th century, describe this as a threefold, fourfold tomb, as that hidden part in the threefold tomb of Chaucer, Spencer and Beaumont on the other side of that wall. This is what needs to be returned. Otherwise, all the meaning has been ripped out of it. And of course, that is what has happened generally since the arrival, uh, bossiness and incompetence of Stratfordianism, where truth is simply ripped out and uh, nonsense and bewildering fairy tales put in its place. So please, Westminster Abbey, if anyone with any authority is watching this, please work out a way to put things right. Thank you all very much for listening. There will shortly be a presentation called John Cook New put up. If you subscribe and press the bell button, you will be given warning when it's ready to be viewed. And I hope you'll stick with me because there's plenty more exciting adventures to come. Thank you for watching.